Italian scenery shots. Oh, also attention to detail. Your boy and his wife have been to Italy twice and this is spot on in both the look and the music oddly fits too, so why not? So they did this beautiful zoomed out shot, but they also made the cars move down below, even though your eyes are hardly even focusing on that. Also though, this is exactly what Naples looks like. David Productions, I love you guys! This must be the work of a stun door! Already giving us a better understanding of this character without exposition. <laughs> That transition is incredibly Jojo, except that it's usually visual related and this time it was audio related, which is cool! <laughs> oh my god, it's baby Aaron Chan the third! Haha, <laughs> <laughs> this is so damn cool! Super nice touch showing his stand above him and barely visible! Hold up, back it up, wait just a minute, and all the rest of those kinds of sayings. His family member is none other than... Well now, this just got super interesting to me. Never thought we would see Dio be dragged back into the story in some way. Keeping Mr. Froggo-san alive. There were some people confused by the Jojo comments I make in my other videos when things like this happen, and this is why I say it, because most other anime don't tend to do stuff like rotating shots, first person views and the like. Oh my god. Oh, also, this is a good time to remind you guys to subscribe if you're not already, as going by my analytics, around 85% of my viewers aren't actually subscribed, so be sure to hit that button, boys and few gals! I should also mention I say few gals, because like 90 plus percent of my audience here are boys! This transition, and also my wife and I have been to Milan and Pisa, whoop! Having Jotaro in this season, if only for a little while, makes me feel so goddamn happy! Man, I love it when you're at the start of a new season and there's new characters and they're using their stands and stuff. The first time he uses his own stander! Man, they've really tightened up this transition, haven't they? Oh, he's got this photo on his desk, what a sweetheart! Using this background music, which just made the whole Jotaro vs. Dio battle back in Stardust Crusader so much more epic. This rotating shot. See what I mean? It's Jojo style. Oh my word, what the hell is going on? As usual, I have no idea, but I like it a whole lot! That's funny, I was just about to write that myself! It's that time again! We've just seen a new stand! Say it with me now! Another unique stand! Actually seeing Golden Wind for the first time! Okay, so I'll be honest, normally when I first hear a song it doesn't do much for me, but as I play it over and over again I start to like it or even love it. But I can say with this OP, right from the get-go, that I absolutely love the song. It's one of those rarities where it just ticks all of the boxes for my ear holes. On top of this we get the usual, to be expected, insanely high quality animation as well. I mean seriously, these guys just straight up make some of the best looking OPs. Jorno Learning more about poor little Gionno's past. Blech. Can't show it, but his stepfather was hitting him, and then I can show the kids bullying him, and so they're doing a great job of putting his current character into a very sympathetic frame, in spite of the thievery. Well played. Mada Jorno Jishinwa, Kono Norukuni Kizuite Orazu, Muishikino Kodo Data. 
saving this guy's life, again firmly positioning him into being a protagonist of the story, forgiven for any past petty crimes by us the viewer. Above this epic scene of the gangster taking care of him has to be this even more epic JoJo stance. This beautiful animation and the fact that he said Mura as he attacked. You guessed it. I don't know what's going on, but I'm enjoying the heck out of it. It's like David Productions is just showing off now, and I'm glad they do. They deserve all of the praise that they get. Getting to see this dude stand and that awesome, equally powerful punch right there, boy. Okay, that's just sickeningly great. Dude, there's so much attention to detail, they put freaking graffiti down the alleyways. Wow, what a disgusting but awesome stand ability. The ability to climb into someone and just have them carry you around. Whoa, that's gross. Dude, that's so damn clever. Man, I miss Jojo, where I watch battles and I'm all like, how is he gonna win this battle? And then it happens, and oh my word, I love it. <laughs> this! This entire scene of him explaining why he stopped his attack in a super logical and well laid out way and times like this just build character insanely well by letting us the viewer in on who he is as a person. Brilliant. David Productions must have been pained to find out that part 5 took place in the beautiful Italy and thus all of the scenic views they'd have to construct, but they did it and did a wonderful job regardless. I mean, look at that scenery and that's what it's like! Oh, also shout out to his voice actor. I personally know him as the main character from Real Life, which is a great anime, and also the in debt kid from www.working, which I adored, but he's great in this all the same. <laughs> Also, also shout out to your boy Moomin Rider over there from One Punch Man as well. Expanding the crew whilst solidifying the mission goal in such a great way, no less, by having it done organically and not via exposition in the form of like flashbacks with voiceover or something. I mean. This CD definitely makes me think that someone is getting lucky and has great visuals, but mostly that someone is getting late in the JoJo verse as I write this. Talk about amazing attention to detail. They even color match these cars parked up perfectly before and during the bird's eye view. <laughs> Oh dear lord, so this is a thing that exists in this anime! So basically, I would sum up this entire interaction as something that's of course creepy and well done, but most importantly that it's something new as far as I can tell to Jojo as an anime. I can't recall seeing something that was ever clearly beyond the realms of possibility in terms of the gangster's size, and also that instead of there being a battle, it's a change of pace to see him be delegated a strange task. One of the many things I enjoy about Jojo is that it never feels stale. They're always doing new and different things each season, and of course in the manga originally. Wait a <laughs> this just got way more intense, and I didn't even think about this either. Jojo is the absolute king of building extreme tension, and how's he gonna get out of this one isms? <laughs> that! Camera no shutter, Yeah, this. You gotta love how they didn't just make his first plan work flawlessly. Now this is a real change of pace. This hasn't worked out at all. This like never happens really, or at the very least never happens this early on. He's only had it like an hour. 
生きて選ばれる者への道お前は採点化したのだ受けてもらうぞ Jesus, so much is happening that my brain is struggling to process it all So this stand identified the old man instead and looks like he shot him with a stand arrow Color palette change 向かうべき一つの道を Man, I love it This battle scene where he decides to fight back, and I'm definitely not hating the Mura 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 every time either. In fact, I kind of missed it. Ew, this stand is so creepy, and the sound effects really help out with that. For yet another real stand battle of sorts, because even when it's not outright fighting, it's still highly entertaining as the enemy's stand is being figured out and how to beat it. <laughs> Saving the life of our little baby Aaron Chen III! <laughs> This is so very clever! Kondo. No. Nani. Yay, it's the first Jojo Nani! <laughs> well, boys and few gals, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and safely assume that even none of you smarty Jojo pants managed to piece this particular puzzle together, right? Hell, if you did guess this on your first go, go and join Bloody Mensa! <laughs> Oh, this absolutely gets a win. Was there ever any need to question that? Why would you question that, viewer? Why? Moriocho, the Joe Star, no Ketto, Ketsugo Sanio. It's more me take a car. Kokoroga. Mother de Jibon no energy, that to them, you and Bacano. Ano Sanio. I love this, and clearly, if he gets it from anywhere, it's not from the bloody noggin of Dio, but instead from the glorious loins of Jonathan and Joe Star, and his equally awesome bloodline. Kare no Karada no Nakaniwa. Oh, this! Come on now! Oh, you know I can't show it, but he changed his banana into a gun and he shot himself in the noggin, and wow! That was insanely awesome! And after this epic reveal of his team, who are all stand users themselves, I think we'll end episode 4 with a final win. Not only doing this in the beautiful look of a classic ancient Italian building, but laying out the whole gang's structure for us. So no win here, but just putting this out there. I wonder if the boss ends up being the gang leader he saved as a kid. Hand-drawn characters in the scene with some of the best low-key CGI I've witnessed to just make the scene perfect and have it feel lived in. Mm, so much effort went into this anime! Expertly setting us up in the form of this speech as to what the next big task is for their new team. Yes. This overhead view of Rome makes me feel physically sick. It looks so good it's considered illegal in several countries. I'm literally going to have to call law enforcement because you're watching this, but I won't if you leave a like. So I'm surprised to see David Productions turn to CGI for scenes like this, but in all honesty, it's good looking, clean and crisp, and not overused, most importantly. As always, I don't know what's going on, but you best believe I not only love it, but that that love is equal to a win. Introducing us to these new characters in such a light-hearted way, just letting us see them going about their day and interacting with one another. Such a great way of doing it, and I'm liking them already. <laughs> This was a totally and genuinely unexpected interaction after the last win! Midoriya! Ayazawa from My Hero Academia, your boy! This entire pea drinking gross type of scene! Oh, 
Multiple moving characters on screen at one time, like it ain't no big deal. This epic transition. The start of what will no doubt become this team's first battle against another stand user. This creepy sound effect and the filter do an amazing job of building the tension. This great music and everything else. Man, Jojo is so epically clever in how they use stand abilities all of the time and they perfectly integrate it into the story time and again. Oh, we would be plain odd stupid to not add a win for this moment. Giorno once again proves his character and more importantly his ever-present drive to achieve his dream and risks him sacrificing his life in order to allow the fellow team member to comfortably use his stand ability without fear. What a great moment, dude! Man, this sense of being overwhelmed when you first start a career like this is all too real for me since I was a prison officer for 11 years starting at 18. However, the main reason for the win here is not animating him running on the spot like almost every other company would do to save money. Hell, there's even other characters moving in the same scene. Loving this flashback thus far. In fact, I dare say and risk a little wrath from fans that historically Jojo hasn't been the best when it came to flashbacks and were better at building characters through the ongoing storyline. However, in this part five, it seems to be something that's beautifully pieced together on both occasions so far to build up and then present the current character before us. <laughs> And then they expertly proved my last point by adding in this moment. Hot damn! Another standor! <laughs> what a fantastic and genuinely unique stand ability. The mongoka never fails to amaze me. Oh dear lord, that's equally unique and terrifying looking. Oh man, I love that so much. It just looks so terrific. Oh, I love JoJo's Bizarre Avenger. Is it just me, or does this not feel super reminiscent of Joseph attempting to tell Jotaro the secret behind Dio's Zawaldo ability? This entire interaction and figuring out how to beat the enemy stand. Also, this moment stops me from being able to add a sin on anime sins, as I was initially confused as to why he asked for boat number one and yet ended up on boat number two. Loving how adaptable his stand is to be useful in so many different scenarios. Can't wait to see how he'll use it down the line as well. I feel like his role of the fake, typical Japanese gangster in Season 3 of My Hero Academia helped him in this moment. Continuing the insanely awesome tradition of giving us real-world genuine information on new locations. Also another beautiful scenery shot. Well, that's just about one of the worst things I've ever seen. A fishing hook through his eyelid. Wow. This is an awesome, amazing sounding and looking event which occurred during the course of this anime. Seriously, I don't know what brought on that sudden dance, but I ain't hating on it even one little bit. In fact, they can go ahead and take two wins right here because that was smooth as warm butter. <laughs> Man, the stand has so much versatility as well, they're knocking it out of the metaphorical park in terms of uniqueness in this fifth part so far. So they've now officially sold me on this character. I like him a lot, I like what he stands for and what he's trying to do, so mission accomplished! 
俺のスタンドセックスピストルズは暗殺向きだスタンドユニカだヨットから泳いでくるのに結構時間がかかってしまいましたね男がズッケーロとこのカプリ島で待ち合わせた時間まで20分 Telling us this information in a non-exposition kind of way which I must add is very rare for Jojo but appreciated nonetheless 何やってるんです How things in JoJo barely ever go to plan always keeps us on the edge of our seats. Oh, this is just one of the best things I've seen. Seriously, though, that animation quality and the ingenuity behind the attack to make it look like that is out bloody standing. Guido Mista no Jinsei Kan wa Shonen Jidai kara Tanjun ni ikiru to yu mono de atta. Oh, yay, we're getting another origin story for another character. The question is, though, can they uphold the quality and give us a third great story on the bounce? Saving the woman from the car that I can't show, and yeah, they went real dark on what he was doing to her and trying to do to her. Man, Jojo doesn't shy away from the dark stuff, never has. This, wait for it, beautifully put together scene. You may know this about me, but I'm pretty cool when it comes to taking out people like this, so take a win. Wow, my goodness, so he figured that out quick. This moment had me remove a sin on anime sins. Yet again, another great stand. No joke, it's just great. These little guys are amazing! Okay, so not only is that obviously insanely good looking, but imagine if he fell. Like, he's not safe, is he? Yet another fantastic example of how the Magica not only thought up the stand itself, what it looked like, how its abilities worked, but then also different ways of using that stand's ability. I'm adoring this scene, and it's only made all the better by having the great Stardust Crusaders battle music playing. These guys are awesome, just like Harvest! How he worked around to find a solution to this enemy in front of him, and as always in such a way that I would never have personally guessed. <laughs> Tough guy. Color me deeply intrigued, boys. That is so clever. It actually feels like a step forwards in the anime in the direction of the final goal, and I'm loving it. You know, I also wanted to mention how it's nice that at least in a small way, part 5 has taken us to another location. As much as I loved part 4, I was kind of sad that we didn't travel around, but at the very least, going to this island was awesome and reminded me of the old times from Stardust. Also coming back to this in the recording phase, it's awesome that we got to see Pompeii a great deal as well. The whole twist regarding the boss's daughter and their mission to keep her safe, it adds yet another important element to the overall story that helps keep it really fresh, much like the mission to obtain the old boss's fortune and hand it over.
Getting our first look at all of the enemies our heroes will be facing off against, and holy hell, I really cannot wait for it now! This simple to understand layout. Get another stand on! <laughs> yeah, boy! Get him with that stand-up play, Deku kid! <laughs> how insane your boy Midoriya is getting after having his looks damaged. Quite the contrast versus how he reacted to getting a fork to the face by one of his own team members earlier on. <laughs> Ant-Man Standor This Whoa, how they're showing us his stance ability taking effect on him. That's so awesome. This comment also had me remove a sin on anime sins. Really struggling on that one. They keep cutting down my sins by addressing it in some way each time. <laughs> Midoriya's voice actor is just absolutely perfect for this role. <laughs> For me, how stands are dealt with is just the absolute height of genius in this anime. I mean, how awesome does it look to see him friggin' platforming between the phones and the buttons being right huge? It really wouldn't be JoJo if, as always, there wasn't a character outright narrating what's happening. <laughs> oh my god! Between this guy and the boss who died earlier on, they're really taking it next level with character designs. Absolutely can't show it, but the bloody car came out of him and crushed them both. That's nuts. That's Ant-Man stuff, and it's nuts. This clever editing technique. I'm enjoying getting to see the enemy going through an event such as this. Normally in JoJo, everything is being done to the heroes, and that's it largely. Save for Dio threatening like whole horse back in the old days. But that's it for the most part. <laughs> Figuring this out! I could... I could never be a stand user. I can't work stuff like this out. <laughs> Yet another prime example of animating some of the most unique looking things you'll see in an anime with stuff like this. Yet again, another great backstory for one of the main crew. How the hell did he do it so well every time after barely doing it at all up until this point, other than Frenchie's past? It's actually for me one of the saddest, a story of a young kid who lost his mother, left home and fell in with someone he thought he could trust only to be betrayed. His story of entering the gang is wonderful and gives us a much greater understanding of why they interact with one another the way they do, like attempting to teach him math for example, and the whole scene is tied together wonderfully with some soulful music. Oh, oh come on now, this is just stupidly good looking. Even though I personally wouldn't have risked telling them all of this, it's still, as always, a really super duper clever technique for getting out of a seemingly impossible situation. Seriously, that actually happened. He put the fire out using the blood from his wrist and then shrinking down to the point where it'd cover his whole body. Dude, that is nuts! Yup, just about all of this. Just all of it, really. Take a win, you glorious animators! Part 5 is just overflowing with style, man. 
The end to this entire battle, and done so with style. Giving mad props where props are most definitely due, like a proper leader should. Pompey, Roma Jin's royal city, was built in a peaceful and calm way. それがベセビオ火山の火山歴と溶岩によって。More genuinely correct real world information. Also, Pompey s e n r i s h a 僕たちが目指す犬の床は、そのポンペイの悲劇詩人の家と呼ばれる場所の入り口近くにある。This actually exists in the real world, and that fact is one of the many, many reasons I love JoJo's Bizarre Adventure so damn much. By the way, for those wondering to save you Googling, the two words literally translate into beware of the dog, and it's well over 2,000 years old. Leave a cheeky like if you learnt something! Oh, it's another type of mirror stand, maybe? Stand door! So obviously I know they had to change the stands' names, and that's fair enough, but I'll drop a win here for all of those musical references we see along the way. Also, if you want to laugh, you should watch any video on YouTube linked to the songs, as the comments from JoJo fans are hilarious and well made. Seeing him making that quick choice between the knife and the pencils was so nicely done, since it of course symbolizes his random, violent, or calm life. Oh, damn! That's what happened! Again, they went dark, guys and few gals, and I never hate it. They also do dark moments great. They handle them so well. It does feel very rare to have a non main character getting so much time on screen, but it's the right choice. All of these flashbacks lead to one conclusion that the team leader is a good man who has created a team of people who both adore and trust him, and it's so very interesting to see where this is heading with the main character now in tow. This unique stands ability, but most importantly, they didn't go out of his way to kill those crows, but they died by chance. Oh, that's definitely getting a win. That seems mega rare for a stand. Him standing his ground and refusing to leave Fugo behind. Woo! I'm super interested now to see if John no will be able to save these two. Man, that'll make him upset. I have not a flipping single clue what's going on right now, but I'm intrigued as hell. Now I get it, and isn't that just about the most clever use of his stand ever? That's amazing. Like, seriously, how the hell did the manga could think that up? The whole scene of him being infected and then leaving the mirror, which had some brilliant looking animation on it. You might wonder why I didn't show the whole thing, but there was a lot of risky scenes that kept flashing up, so figure this best to be safe. Yet more fantastically unique ways to use each stand's abilities. Finally to this epic battle, what a tough foe as well, requiring all three of them to take him down, and this final attack is brilliant. Kind of reminds me of Josuke's stand's attack a little. Well guys, that'll do it for this video, I'm dropping a double win here, firstly for John not figuring out a way to win and cure himself in the process. His speech was epic as well, and his character is brilliant and only getting better episode by episode. The second win is for the very end of the episode as well, as we get an after credits scene giving us some foreshadowing for the next episode, with an interesting looking new character. Thanks for watching everyone, so glad to be back covering Jojo. If you like what you saw, hit the like button and maybe leave a comment. You can also follow me on Twitter at TheHonestGamer, and support the channel on my Patreon if you wish to. Clickable 
links down below. And of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Good use of CGI. That still works. I actually went back and checked and even a couple of minutes prior to this reveal they were animating this turtle with the same groove in his shell. So nowadays it takes just over two and a half hours to get from Naples to Florence by train but I like to reasonably assume that David Productions did their research and found that in 2001 it took three and a half hours and that's worth a win in theory. Another unique, and I do mean genuinely unique, standoff. I mean, look at that. It's going through the door and creating a lovely effect. What's not to like? Well, this is just one of the coolest things I've seen in this anime. They're inside of a key and the turtle's back in a sweet little room. That's actually amazing. This! <laughs> another actually and genuinely another actually and genuinely genuinely another actually and another actually and genuinely another actually and genuinely looking another actually and genuinely you another actually and genuinely unique looking stand on another actually and genuinely unique looking stand on <laughs> <laughs> Something is happening. I don't know why, and I'm loving every second of it. Okay, I'm really creeped the hell out now. I don't like it, so make it stop. Look at the mask with my boy. Okay, so two wins here. Firstly, for this horrifying scene and its crazy good ability in general. And secondly, because gosh darn it, does this stand not remind me of those loppers in Return to Castle Wolfenstein? Ooh, oozing with style. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Those of the Joe Star bloodline seem to be very keen tacticians. Jojo has such an outstanding history of getting better and better as the season progresses. It's the reason why almost every recent season's Everything Great About videos are larger towards the end, and so far the same can seemingly be said for Golden Wind. That! This stand's crazy ability once again must have posed some level of difficulty when it came to animating it, and yet it looks great! Even though these little dudes aren't getting the job done, everyone can admit they're super cute and they're really trying! Oh yeah, after what I just said, if you thought I was going to skip this little segment, you've got another thing coming. This epic entrance with such a great build-up, no less. <laughs> this sudden and genuinely shocking turn of events masterfully disguised by having the frank random old man grab a hold of his teammate just beforehand. <laughs> Banned from Seven Deadly Sins. So I can't show it obviously and I don't know if it's for real or not since, you know, Jojo and all, but it seems like they just shockingly killed Mr. Off. So yeah, whoa. <laughs> 
Having her be a character showing care and compassion for those around her, protecting her is such a nice touch on her personality. What? Are you kidding me right now? Oh my goodness me, he's still alive and the little guy saved him and he's got ice and he's teary. Also, I think a second win is in order because of how they deal with death largely in the Jojo verse. When someone really dies, it has a huge impact. It's made to be a big deal. It hits you hard when it happens. Just felt like I had to give props for that. <laughs> God damn it, now it really does feel like I have to add a genuinely sad win because he really is dead now and it's seemingly ticked all of the boxes as well in terms of raw emotion and a very sad farewell. I hope it's not true, but I'm really expecting it this time. This epic battle! Oh, that's disgustingly beautiful. What a little trick that was. I feel sick to my stomach with awesomeness. Not only a brilliant end to the episode with fantastic, soulful music, but this tells us so much about him that he's more than content to give his life to protect his crew with literally zero hesitation at all. I love that bit right there, boys and few gals. This visual ED change happens and it involves lots of plant and relaxing stance related actiation. Before we begin episode 16, this is probably a good opportunity to remind you to hit that subscribe button since around 70% of my viewers aren't actually subscribed. So hit that button and the bell and ensure you don't miss part three and all the other great content coming. Super nice touch having the train conductor come fly out and almost strike the camera as it were. Aniki! Oh man, he saved him at the last second and then he almost fell off but his stand grabbed him and I can't take much more of this anymore! This guy seems to be another in the short line of unique villains capable of honoring their opponent's heart dating back to the first season in Wamu. People like to talk about Araki Forgot, I hope I pronounced that right, and I'll admit I haven't looked into that as of yet, however the fact that he continuously comes up with stuff like this is astonishing to me. He gave the villains a stand ability, then part of that stand ability, aimed towards whoever is being attacked, is made known to the heroes, and then that same ability is used against the villains later on. It's like a brilliant puzzle he put together. For the end to this enemy and his incredibly powerful stand ability, easily worth a blood spatteringly great win. <laughs> the season never stops surprising me, damn it! <laughs> I feel like this is worthy of a win because once again it goes back to his character that I mentioned at win number 224. He's in such a state, moments away from passing and yet still, true to his earlier word, he's continuing to use his ability on the train to the end. <laughs> Getting to see these two insanely unique stand powers go head to head in the battle of weird and randomness. I couldn't agree more with that assessment now that we know he can wield the hook towards a person's heart without most people being able to resist at all. Also, I gotta add that I'm loving Mr. Stan chatting away and helping him. That's so awesome. <laughs> 
That is so damn clever. I love that. It really wouldn't be an episode of Jojo if there wasn't someone actively narrating what's happening in front of them. Oh my god, he's so cute! He's trying to help! Oh, that was too close! Even though it's villa character progression, it's still character progression, and with that message and the inspiring music, it's almost as though this moment is aimed at promoting the villain being able to live up to his bro's high estimations and complete his mission, which is just nuts! <laughs> Epic color palette change! Nice little callback there to what his bro told him on the platform earlier on, and a fantastic end to a great battle between these two very powerful foes. This is so amazing because it's something I actually mentioned at win number 237, and it almost feels right to have his character devolve quickly into that of a petty scumbag after that noble build-up before, since it'll make his demise much easier on us the viewer, and makes sense given his character. <laughs> Go right on ahead and take two wins for your trouble right there. What a great way to finish this up. <gasps> Getting that staple of a Jojo death notification and also seeing that everyone else is back young and healthy again. My girl just developed a stand ability. What's this mean? This scene with this weird dude doing weird creepy stuff and I ain't hating even a moment of it. Baby face! <laughs> well, something weird just happened? <laughs> Probably a good time having just seen the thing on the back of her neck and seeing how he's programming it to say another Yuniko does standoka. But in all seriousness, how's that not unique? He made a PC baby trying to mess up his non-PC father and his friends! Fantastic use of CGI in all honesty for this great new stand! Yup, not gonna lie, once again I didn't have a clue what they'd do. I didn't even get it whilst he was doing it, and now I do, and it's so clever it's making me smile as I write this. <laughs> Love moments like this in Jojo. Not only the whole funny peeing in the other dimension that he opens up bit, but seeing a ginormous Gionno and stuff too. A ginormous Anno, as it were. When the guy talked about how powerful the baby stand was, I was suspect, but I didn't realize it would be able to gain the upper hand so quickly like this, and it's remote controlled. That transition, though. <laughs> That's amazing! Well, I'll admit I was close to talking about his near death, or as the anime would want us to believe his actual death at the time, but I held off because, well, it's Jojo, and now he's alive, and I must admit, I had a bit of a nervous sweat going on, but I'm happy now. Well, now this character is rather intense. I'm glad I can show this. It's not too bad at all, but looks fantastic. Loving that music kicking in and how they're not ending the battle in quite such an easy fashion after the build up of this powerful stand. I must say, when I first saw his ability, I thought it to be quite weak compared to the others in the Joestar family line. However, now at episode 18 and having seen it being used multiple times, it definitely comes across as being very adaptable and strong. 
やるんだとやりたいようにやったところで無駄だったようだなどっちみち This brilliant finale to the battle, way better than where I thought it might end before, and what a great looking shot of these two as the flames' embers rise around them. This sentence is very funny, and it's also Bakugo, and that's of course a win. I was very curious as to how they were going to deal with this character, as you can't really have him constantly creating new stand PC Windows Vista babies all the time. And they not only did it in a way that made sense, but in a way that was creative as well. That's so clever, can't say much else, it's so, so clever to use a stand like that. <laughs> Nice little added touch right there showing us this, as it kind of throws things into a bit of confusion. This is the boss, but he appears more like someone who is a recluse, perhaps sad in life, depressed or lonely. I don't know, it's not a lot to go on yet, but it's very intriguing and again, nicely added. This map before the second half begins, showing us their key locations thus far across Italy. Beautiful scenery shot! Also, this information is as always very true. This is indeed what the train station actually looks like. Another original paladar! Okay, so 90% of this win is for how awesome this looks that he's encased in ice and the other cheeky 10% is because I like how it's almost opposite to Bakugo's quirk in My Hero Academia, T. Stunning levels of CGI right there, boys! I mean, he's not wrong, sort your lives out! <laughs> Finding an amazingly original way out of that seemingly impossible scenario. <laughs> this awesome ass rotating shot. I seriously love these little guys. So far in Golden Wind, they're probably my favorite stand, actually. Jesus, this guy is absolutely friggin' relentless! They just got rid of him twice already and now he's back for a third attempt! Damn you, Bakugo! <laughs> Using Stardust Crusader's music to build up the amazing tension is always worth an easy win! Once again, I'm just blown away by the sheer volume of creative stand battles in this part 5 so far. The team as a whole means so much to all of these characters, and how was that reinforced in us all along? That's right, by excellent fleshed out flashback sequences everyone had back in part 1 I talked so much about. After seeing all of that, it actually makes sense why they strive to complete their mission and strive to keep each other alive. This is such a powerful stand, it's insane, both in terms of its raw ability, but also in how it can fully protect its user and make him go super fast as well. You know, I gotta say, I like how Resolve is playing such an important part in their struggle. It had a big impact during the train section with Zippy Man as well. It's just a different and nice character trait brought about by Giorno, seemingly. I didn't think we would be gifted even more flashbacks, giving us an even greater understanding of what the leader and the team in general means to each other. What a treat! <laughs> If anyone knows this crew solidifying highly emotional music tune, I'll be very grateful if you'd stick it in them comments for me. What a lovely track! <laughs> Absolutely. 
absolutely incredible and artistic looking moment as his stand and he himself appears to evolve. For this turn of events leading to yet another turn of events as the battle is fought against this incredible Bakutho! First person perspective. Sadly, as I'm sure you've guessed, I can't show the back and forth shooting bit, so I'll simply say that was a fantastic moment that, given the enemy, was thoroughly deserving of the long lasting battle. Oh my god, it's still going on! What? What's going on? あなたの覚悟はこの登りゆく朝日よりも明るい輝きで道を照らしているあなたへ。Okay, I changed my mind. This was the best way to end it, with his teammate being able to join in and save him at the last moment and deliver this brilliant final attack leading to an even more epic finish. That. Beautiful senior shot number two. <laughs> ho ho! This little juicy nugget at the end of the episode. I started to really enjoy these moments where everyone gathers around to gain the next piece of cryptic information from the boss pushing them to the next part of their journey. This is what it looks like! Just wanted to take this opportunity to add that I'm giving a win here purely for the rising expectations inside of me, since clearly we're only now just slightly over halfway through the season, so what's coming next is a great ever-building source of excitement within me right now. How he was able to effectively communicate what he meant via a slightly coded sentence. It's great to see her raise these questions and concerns, since we've seen very little like this from her up till this point, but they're genuine feelings that make sense in this situation. Okay, that's Toots Adorbs after the previous I'm not nervous shirking his hand moment. Oh man. That's a genuinely lovely reason to make that incredibly hard decision, but he knows his mother would be okay, but doesn't think his father would be. Got me genuinely choked up, actually. Also, I feel like I gotta shout out the fact that they worked in character development for his father, even though it's likely not that relevant to his character now or his story, in that he worked to overcome his difficulty dealing with people in order to expand his business so he could earn more and send his son to a good school. I love stuff like that. Giving the lad a reason to care about drugs in his country, given how it almost killed his father in such a pointless fashion. Oh, all of this, most definitely. What a little lad protecting his old man! Giving him a fantastic backstory and a reason to hate the drug trade, like Giorno, in a way that makes sense. <laughs> the 
this god tier transition. Funny enough, I actually mentioned wanting more of this very thing in everything great about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure OVAs from the 1990s, when we see a great scene of Jotaro using an invisible star platinum to break a wall inside Dio's mansion to allow light in, and suddenly we get that very thing pretty much here. By the way, that video is for patrons only in case you were wondering, but if you'd like it, you can purchase it for a mere $1 and get multiple other videos at the same time for the same price. Link down below. <laughs> This is way better than anything I could have predicted happening in the story, and what an intense build-up and brief amazing first interaction against what is clearly an incredibly powerful foe. I love this bloody ability! This is just crazy, and I really think he may now be on the cusp of death, but goodness me, this is setting up the villain and the main story in such an epic fashion, and I'm super intrigued by the notion of yet another powerful time-related stand. <laughs> Oh, this is so good! I can just tell they're going to masterfully set up this new insane stand's abilities! Oh my god, I don't want him to die and he's fighting back! Oh, and also, oh my god, another unique stand up! I can't take this anymore! It's too much for me! Just drop in wins right now. The tension, the intensity, the looming death of a main character. So many twists and turns being thrown at us, it's unbelievably great. God damn, just take another one, will you? For our boy being super intelligent during a battle and despite being so badly wounded, still finds a way past this incredible enemy. Please, please just tell me he's going to be okay. I can't take it in JoJo. You almost never know for sure when someone is going to be killed off and it's driving me insane. I've already said farewell to him three times in my head already. And there it is, their utterly heartbreaking way of letting us know he's gone as his stand abilities undo and his eyes grow dark. Man. I don't know how to think and feel anymore! What is going on? Okay, I'm more calm now. He did save his life, and I'm not sure how because he didn't have a pulse, but I don't mind. And then he gained their attention throwing the laptop, which made the boss stay away briefly. Man, take two wins for the near constant twists and turns I just experienced, which has left my heart injured. Okay, so now it's got me panicking again. My heart, my heart! Again, if anyone knows this song, let me know. It's so damn inspiring, just like his speech itself is right here. Now this, this was unexpected. And in all honesty, it's probably the best way to go about it. Even after a rousing speech like that, it would be strange if everyone immediately said, Yes, we're on board! Yes! Unexpected twist! Gotta say, Mr. Directing these words at Giorno at first confused me, but now I believe it's to do with him believing he should convince him to come along, since they've bonded after fighting Bakufo, and evolving together as friends and comrades, and that's a super nice touch. 
You know, I think ultimately this is a great scenario. The team is split. It's unexpected, and I cannot wait to see what direction the anime goes in now and how all the characters will play a part moving forward on different sides. Oh my word, that's hit me as hard as Samwise rushing out to Frodo despite being unable to swim as he didn't want to leave his side. What a beautiful and powerful moment as he realises how closely his own past matches hers and that the only people that never abandoned him was this very crew. Okay, this scenery shot and the end of this episode just has to get one. I absolutely cannot wait to see what's next. Oh, this all day long. What if you thought I'd somehow miss this new OP? You're a silly goose. Leave a like on the video to show your goosey gooseness. Anyway, great new track. For me, even better than the first. And goodness me, if the visuals aren't absolutely outstanding, they've clearly tied in the characters past with their present, what has brought them to this point and such. And we also got the treat of briefly seeing Trisha's stand as well. So minor spoilers, but it's no big deal, I suppose. Overall, absolutely fantastic, and I'm seriously impressed by that. ケガ、ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。ケガ。
Definitely not showing the propeller attack from his bomber, but man, that was amazing how he changed tactics so quickly and once again gained the upper hand. I get the distinct feeling that John Null's presence in the group is actually going to lead them to all perhaps become stronger people themselves. <laughs> giving an actual plausible explanation as to why he didn't immediately finish off John no by having Deku-chan rush out in pursuit. <laughs> I wish I could show it, what a great moment with that awesome music no less. <laughs> Color palette change and an epic turn of events. Well, this is totally unexpected as he essentially gives his life to create a way for him to attack back. Once again, Jojo always excels at giving both parties seemingly inescapable scenarios and then a sudden twist occurs, giving them a way out. <laughs> Okay, so obviously there's so much blood, but I'll try editing around it to show the best bits. But god damn, if that wasn't a great end to his battle, and he ended up taking them both out like a legend! Yes, yes I was right, I bloody know it, he's pulling them all together as a team and as individuals, and this moment is nothing short of beautiful as it's openly acknowledged, I love it! Epic! I can't wait! Let's do this, boys! First time on a plane in a while! Maybe since Stardust! This epic view! My god, why can't more anime do stuff like this? It's so original! Standard Even though we did doubt Giorno initially, it's nice to see him actually pull out his gun ready to attack regardless. Juju is known for his unique enemies and stands, and those stands' abilities, but this? This is very different, it almost opens up for brand new types of stands, since this one specifically works after the user is dead. Nani? This is like the third super intense NANI from this episode, and I'm absolutely loving it. Fantastic use of CGI right there, boys! Giorno is made of such tough stuff, taking off his own arm like that is just insane. Gold experience and sticky fingers are used to attack or fight against the power of the power. First win here is for this incredible scene where we're told that his injuries cannot be healed and that he's out of this fight for good. Likely not true, but for now that's devastating to hear. Second win is because even though we aren't shown him using his ability, we see his arms being zipped up to stop the blood flow down here. The reveal of the stand still posing them a threat and how amazingly it was handled in terms of the reveal. Getting to see her become a true member of the team, seeing their sacrifices and in turn starting to want to do more herself, including protecting the arm Giorno managed to make just in time. Equal to the last one is probably showing her to be afraid in this moment, doubting herself and wanting to selfishly hide instead. It's great character development. Even better than the previous win though is how she just reacted without even really thinking about it. This damn stand is insane and extremely powerful and my god she got lucky just now.
Oh yeah, it's her stand! Another unique stand-up! Oh man, that's awesome! I cannot wait to see how this ability is going to get used now moving forward. Loving how this stand is one much like Baby Erin Chance in that she can actively communicate with it and it with her, although this one is even more capable of communication. Alright, I'm officially all on board with this new epic stand, especially if it can just do stuff while she does stuff. That's nuts! How the hell are you meant to beat that? It's still alive! What the hell happens now? Trish being awesome! For Trish thinking up this last minute plan to get rid of what was arguably one of the greatest enemy stands they've ever faced or we've ever seen in general really. Alright, you know what? That whole scene was awesome. She's grown so much as a character. She saved Giorno's hand and thus his ability to heal the others. She saved their lives. She's awesome in everything now. Sandome, notorious big. Kanzen Sasgai, Fukano. Learning what eventually came of this abomination of a stand. That! Sardinia Starting us out on the next leg of our story in this season as the boss makes his way to the same island in an attempt to stop his daughter and the crew and giving us a logical reason why he must go himself no less. <laughs> also I wanted to add in here that I think it's very clever to still keep his identity a mystery to us. I like it that way personally. What the heck is even going on? We get this great backstory for this kid who I assume is the boss and he was born from an immaculate birth? So I can't wait to find out what this means for the Jojo verse. Oh, not landing on Mr. Frogo chan This this just got extremely creepy. I honestly cannot express how much I'm adoring this season, guys and few gals. This guy has solidified himself as one of the worst villains in the entire series. One last win for an epically huge panning scenery shot from heaven that must have taken forever to create. Whoa, this just got doubly exciting. I knew the kid who was kind to the frog and tried to save the kid in the road couldn't possibly be the one who burned down his entire town. Jonathan the Joestar. This version of him, who by the way is Tatsumi from A Comic A Kill, is basically me. I love the fact that this guy is still after the boss and we don't know his stand ability yet and he's clearly very powerful. Having him still be in the mix is a stroke of damn genius. What is going on right now? I haven't the first clue as to what's going on, but the fact that this guy has now arrived has got me feeling so hyped right now. I just hope it's concluded before the end of the episode as I'll be tackling 7 Deadly Sins Season 2 Part 1 of 2 next before I finish up Golden Wind entirely. 
近づかぬかでも一体何に俺はお前に近づかない<笑> I've decided this guy is awesome. From how he looks to how he sounds, he's great. I'm sure that you can't see the food. 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 You already know I can't show it, but the entire scene was brilliant as this awesome guy figured out that there was more to the lad than meets the eye and then somehow had razor blades and pins, I think, stream from his mouth. It was crazy. This transition of awesomeness, and that's the Japanese would say, just as expected from an episode of JoJo. Just when I was already in a state of finding his character to be incredibly cool, I find out that he can also hide his appearance, which is even more insanely cool. For the last time of Golden Winds, let's give a round of impression metaphorical applause by doing our own NANI and giving our thanks to the gods of NANIism. You know what I've got you here? I just want to say the vast majority of viewers aren't actually subscribed. It's around 60%. So if you enjoy what you're seeing, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And now back to it! God, I'm loving this kind of battle slash military style music playing as he frets the coming attack. This guy and this stand. Man. I'm like a broken record. I like this dude, and now I don't want him to be dealt with, but you know it's gonna happen most likely, as he's a bad guy of the season. Sad face! Showing us more of this character's traits, such as his sudden bravery here, as he's basically accepting an attack that will forever change his life, and yet does so with confidence in order to understand the enemy he's facing. Oh boy, getting to see him inside reacting in this way, like a split personality is how it comes across at this early stage. Him figuring this one out, a genuinely shocking revelation to yours truly. Just a shame Sir Frogostein the 11th had to die. One like equals one fly in heaven for his highness. And for one last time, be also, check out the phone shaped iris in that frog's eye! That's insane, dude! Also, we did chop his foot off, it was a great scene, and I can't show it, but this view works nicely for YouTube! My boy noticing this, and also how his eyes have clearly changed! He healed his damn foot. There's a chance my boy might live after all. He's so cool, I don't want him gone! ひょっとしてではなく、俺は自分が気づいている以上に、俺が求めるべきものに近づいているのか。ああ、this I'm really not sure what the eyes mean at this early point, but I'll definitely highlight his eye right here. And the main reason for the win is this voice actor's performance. He's bloody brilliant to listen to. Dropping another win here purely for getting to see all of these lads who've been taken out by our lads. Rip lads. But not our lads, as they're still alive, thankfully. But rip these lads. Right, lads? And few gals, of course. This god tier transition is stunning! He's doing it, and he's doing it in style no less, and in terms of David Productions, nicely animated my sons! Damn son, look at those arms in action! No wonder he wants to get within two meters, that's some bloody insane levels of power! Why don't other anime do this kind of stuff? The boys are back in town, and by back in town I mean they're on the scene and at the place, and they're back in the story, and what happens next? <laughs> ah! Plot 
twist. Wow, okay, I'm half impressed and half sad. I liked this dude, so that sucks, but I'm very impressed by the bait and switch of having someone from our main group end up taking him out, rather than the boss finding a sudden way out of the situation. Okay then, I guess in a way it was kind of him by using this insanely clever plan. Like, only Jojo could come up with this many freaking twists and turns in this story, I swear. You know something I've enjoyed more in this season than the others? More so Stardust than Diamond is Unbreakable, and not always the case, just more of the time in Golden Wind, is how situations are dealt with as being deadly and important. Back in Stardust, I think because the heroes didn't have a stand capable of healing, any damage was just fixed the following episode and stuff like that. But in the last two seasons, death has been much more of a real looming threat, and I'm glad to see it being treated as such in scenes like this. Honestly, didn't expect what I'm going to phrase as a whammo moment right here from the boss, but credit where credit is due, he's giving him a level of respect that was unexpected. Oh my god! Oh, this is just... Oh, it's so good. I feel ill. I feel physically ill. I can't take it. I'm really glad they had the guy do one final attempt at taking down the boss, and it would have worked. He was truly a super formidable enemy, and someone I will not forget. But then the boss turns up, and this happened. Whew. <sighs> Wow, see what I mean? Yet another compliment towards his now defeated foe! Also, one final win for that dude because he was an amazing character whilst he was in it. Batalachini figuring out that it wasn't Deku chan who took out the foe by using his intelligence, based on the fact that the enemy didn't have scorch marks on his foot. I seriously, seriously love all of the different users of each stand. It's so clever. Can't show it, but the boss did something really bad to one of the young tourists. Jeez! Even though he's a gangster, I liked that for a moment it looked like he enjoyed helping the kids out as he smiles. Like back in the day as a police officer when he was wide-eyed and innocent and wanted to just help people. Arigato. Oh god, no. This happens. The absolutely heartbreaking way they dealt with his demise. No ifs, buts or maybes, he's gone. Just like that. And just as quick as that. It's not Jojo's usual style, it's so out of left field, it's got me proper shaken. Take a win. An incredibly sad win. Oh, this is so obviously beautifully put together. It's clearly blasting us of the memory of a young police officer attempting to uphold justice and help people and instead being swept under the wave of corruption. I'm sensing some amazing moments coming soon and the emotional punch is made all the stronger by the excellent flashback sequences back in part one. This is so... this is so sad. I get the feeling right now that this is the officer who lost his life protecting him when he was hesitating in arresting the criminal who had dirt on him, like his soul or something, maybe helping him to pass along. Jesus. How do they do this time and time again? Like, can it feel so real? So the hunter. Yeah, I thought as much, and now he's on the verge of tears as well. <laughs> Take one more. I have to be careful with what I show, but everyone's reaction so far to the passing, with Deku's being the most real, even threatening violence against Giono for not healing him, even though he's gone already. These words. Oi, Mister! 
てめえが手抜き捨てんじゃねえの学校の野郎よみがえらせろ根性入れてやりやがれこの野郎 That music, the reaction, the animation quality, it's stunningly beautiful and soulful. Man oh man, they can take two wins for this. This could not have been done any better. That damn voice acting, perfection. And this moment, biting his lip until he bleeds just to try and keep his composure from going off the edge of a cliff and losing himself in despair and anger and potentially losing someone else close to him. Take one more extremely well deserved win for this final reaction to the order to move out. This sudden and very much unexpected twist! Fantastic end to this moment. He managed to finish in time and used the last of his life's energy to quickly give them a clue as to the boss's face. Abakio, Omaiwa Ripani at Tanoda. Ato no monotachi ga kanji totte kurete irusa. I can't see that and not think of those we've lost before along the way. It gets me every time. Final moments of episode 28. Rest in peace. What is your tokoniko? No Hell yeah, we're off to another location, boys and few girl squad. Whoop! Bringing back the stand arrow in a super meaningful way by teasing us with the notion of an additional use for it. I feel like I just have to give a win for him using a quickly melting ice cream as a phone. So the boss regards these two new people as filth. This just got super intriguing. Sadly, I couldn't find anything about the crater, so I don't think that's real, but the meteor is spot on and is absolutely huge. Oh my god, at long last they're actually genuinely giving us a reason for stands to exist. This is amazing! I'm not gonna lie to you all, I'm absolutely loving this. We got the old school tunes rocking, and I can see Frenchie and Jotaro and everyone else, and oh, I'm loving it! <laughs> Color me intrigued with extreme prejudice! Uh, that's absolutely terrifying, and the thing which occurred during the course of this episode. All jokes aside though, even though it's absolutely not a joke, and it is genuinely terrifying, at least this flashback is doing a stand-up job of justifying the boss's statement of this guy being filth. Oh man, this guy really is filth. They're expertly building up this villain in the best way possible via this excellent flashback. And how about a silent round of applause for this season's masterful flashbacks, eh? Oh! Oh! I thought this was his stand just now. I didn't know he's a bloody former patient. Also, his face and all that is covered, so now I'm insanely intrigued. Man, I love this season! I feel like via this statement that the boss isn't actually a truly evil person. Like, he doesn't want the world to burn like Joker for example, and he still has limits he wouldn't cross, or at least a path he wouldn't take simply because it's senseless violence. <laughs> this. 
Oh, I love bits like this. It's so inventive and original and looks so great. This is absolutely insane and I love it. Him managing to figure this out, and once again how unbelievably clever it is to come up with yet another stand, its user, his background, his personality, the stand's design, how it works, what its abilities are in total. The manga car is a damn genius in my eyes. Leave a like on the video if you agree. Another for one of the final times you Nico does stand a dollar! Doing this and everything, and it looks super amazing, and it was super intense and amazing. Good, good, good. <laughs> oh man, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Really glad to see a lot of her former attitude fall by the wayside as she naturally grows closer to everyone else in the group. There's also a good chance that she does genuinely care for the man who saved her from her father, and thus cares about his change of persona recently, which is a nice touch to have her character bring up ultimately, even if it doesn't lead to much in the end. <laughs> This into the sane and must be the work of an enemy stando! Oh and by the way, on a serious note, what an absolutely incredible stand ability to have backing up the Green Day one, or Green Tea I suppose. It's also a nice added touch that makes sense as to why he'd let this one former patient live and join him given how well the stands work together. I love these friggin' little guys so much it hurts! They actually animated the background moving closer to them rather than having them running on the spot. Now this one is yet another incredibly strong stand ability. You know what I find crazy is how genuinely great the manga became at creating stands as the series progressed. During Stardust, they were interesting, but very limited in ability. But moving into Diamonds is Unbreakable, they expanded massively, both in terms of abilities, but also in how they're used in battle to complement other stands and such. Golden Wind is no exception to this rule, and I'd wager he took it even further in this season in such amazing ways. I honestly, and I do mean honestly, absolutely cannot wait to see what part 6 will bring us, and I'm sure David Productions will masterfully piece it all together once again. <laughs> This awesome moment where our crew's mum takes matters into his own sticky fingers and finds a way to gain the upper hand against this powerful enemy in such a glorious fashion, ending the first half of the episode with his epic stand cry with a lovely little farewell, Arrivederci! Such a nice moment as his stand takes apart the concrete flying towards his boy! All of that weird stuff, basically! Oh dear, I just realised exactly what it is he's asking him about. He seems to think Bucciolacci's is not living, and this is confirming something we all know about from part 2 and 3. Now, this is going to be very interesting because clearly he did fall and the mould didn't grow on him just now. Now his persona does seem to be slightly changing, indeed becoming colder, even though his words just before taking the dive were very much in favour of not wanting to lose anyone else in his team. Perhaps it's more to do with admitting either to them or himself what could be happening to him, since he clearly noticed it himself. Ah, this reveal, and I said I didn't want to entertain the thought, and now I'm about to find out everything. Oh man, so that's what it was in the end. A dead man walking, as it were. Oh, 
This scene is edited so damn perfectly and smooth to really add to the tension wrought by the return of this sick and twisted enemy. Also another win right here for Butter Dirt Cheese Quick Thinking, rolling the car and using his ability to allow everyone to escape the car, proving his amazing worth as a leader even in his increasingly failing physical state. Overall, you know, he's a character I'm going to be desperately sad to see go very soon. I just hope he can hold on and help his beloved crew for a few more episodes yet. <laughs> Being very careful what I show, but the effects of this very deadly stand on the general population is by far the worst we've ever seen, I'd wager, with Dio vs Jotaro being a very close second. Especially when you mix the older OVAs with the newer series, which you can see if you pledge any amount on my Patreon and request the videos made on the Jojo OVAs. <laughs> this beautiful, albeit brief, rotating shot of awesomeness. Oh, that is so damn awesome! I'm digging that we're finally getting to see Jono's stand ability in battle once again. Yeah, I think one last win is in order for what I'd likely assume was a panel in the manga and for this great looking ending complete with JoJo styled poses. <laughs> Actually attacking him whilst he's seen distracted by his camera, even if it didn't work. Yet again, the manga didn't simply say his ability is to traverse the solid ground at speed, but instead gave him additional powers, thus making this battle that much more intense. <laughs> I love, love, love how his ability is used in the real world just like this! You know, honestly, I was sat there going, ah, oh, no, he's going to escape. And then they do this, and I'm just left smiling, because in this season and the last, things don't just always go to plan for the enemy when they happen to mention a change in tactics or something. <laughs> These little guys are so amazing, and where the hecking heck has he disappeared to? I have absolutely no clue what's happening, but I'm almost literally on the edge of my seat writing this. What the bloody heck is going on? Oh, for a change, this little guy isn't making me chuckle or laugh, but instead get a little sad, as he wants to go bring back like his brothers and help Mister. Mister, Mister. Uh, okay, yeah, it is getting to me a little bit more now. Okay, I'll pull myself together. Take a win for yet again giving us a scenario just like on the train, whereby one of these little dudes can back up a different member of the team. I love that more than any other big stand change between Diamond is Unbreakable and this season. Oh my goodness, Muda! And a plot twist as he fires back at this horrible enemy with a shockingly quick attack. <laughs> That is one of the most weird and creepy things I've seen anyone do in this entire anime. <laughs> Number 5! Helping out your boy Giorno with this last minute bullet save and the subsequent tree growth of safety that comes as a result. So many twists and turns within this one battle is just nuts. And again, I feel so happy to point out number five, actually helping Giorno at the request of Mista and how amazing that is. Giorno again managing to turn the situation around and 50% of the win is definitely for the fact that they had him fall and actually showed him falling by moving the background, which is such a nice added touch for overall realism in the scene. He's still alive! I can't take much more of this boys and few gal squad! Help! Help!
actually showing us an awesome visual representation of the extreme amount of damage he's taken during their battle. I went back and had a look and they absolutely do not once show us his other hidden arm, so that's very clever and totally unexpected by yours truly. Ah, we all know he'd make it through this battle, but I dig the explanation all the same, of course. Atta boy! Oh god, the longest by far! Man, a fitting end to a horrible creature! This guy still easily wins the award for weirdest guy in the JoJo verse, which, let's face it, is already filled with weirdos! Oh. My. God. Is it me, or is that friggin' Frenchie right there? Showing us the Rome-wide reaction to all of the deaths caused by Green Day's stand effects. This weird guy, in some ways, is even worse than the other guy. Not saying he's worse overall, but simply because of how quickly he turned on his master, as it were, when he found him to be weak. Crazy guy is very crazy. This guy is super strong and quick thinking, kind of ironic given his kind of idiotic former persona when in the presence of his also former master. Oh also, this guy is voiced by Finks from Hunter x Hunter. I knew I'd heard it before. Whenever Bucciarati is fighting someone, we always get such creative looking battles that come mixed with outstanding levels of animation quality. I gotta also admit, I adore how the enemy is just as confused as anyone else is by the leader's strange and ever-changing body. I feel like a few seasons ago this wouldn't have been mentioned, and to include several instances of it being questioned by the enemy is legendary. For no doubt one of the last times, I just have to once again shout out how inventive and creative his ability is. It's outstanding. It's phone in his face during part 2 of 3 levels of outstanding in how he uses it. You gotta admire how brilliant it is that they're both having a race underground like this. How many damn abilities does this one guy actually have? This is insane, he's now spitting dirt and having it fall to the ground like knives! Oh now it makes sense, and even though it's an enemy I'm about to praise, but mainly the manga curve, that's absolutely bloody brilliant levels of cunning to come up with. I'm so, so happy that the time jump slowed down as the seasons progressed. It was painful to me when Speedwagon lasted such a short amount of time in the anime as a whole, and knowing that Frenchie is just 36 in this season makes me genuinely feel amazing and smile ear to damn ear. Also I know it was Frenchie! I cannot tell you all listening right now how pleased I am to see him in this season. It brings me so much genuine joy, and simply because he was someone I've not seen for a very long time. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. One of JoJo's most unique attributes, on top of everything else it does so well, is its time-leaping story. How it goes from the 19th century to the 21st century. It's amazing, and it honestly makes JoJo one of my favourite anime when mixed with everything else. Masaka. <gasps> Can't show it obviously, but his fingers and everything are melting essentially. What a horrible stand power. Okay, this time I really tried hard to figure out how he could escape this situation, and as always I came up short, even though using something to deafen him should have been a little obvious to me. Super clever turn of the tables as always regardless though. <laughs> 
Oh, this is fantastic. And I get to show it because it's all melty as opposed to red goo from the body. Butcherati finding a way to finally take down this foe once and for all, and the boss making his way onto the scene, only serving to further up the ante as we move on to episode 33. Oh man, it's so sad to see him going downhill slowly and essentially dying as time goes on. Alrighty then, after my previously very sad statement, he seems oddly better in that not only can he see, but he could see under his clothing. Now it's all finally coming to a head. They're all right by the meeting place. You've got a hidden boss and a Riva Berta dirt cheese. And now both sides have the information that the boss is very close by. And I absolutely am on the edge of my seat right now. What? Finally giving us a solid and logical explanation as to exactly what is going on with him. This is what the inside of the Colosseum actually looks like. They found a way out of the bloody situation, dammit! Come on, Frenchie, you almost had him! Bring Bringing this old lady back into the story is such a blast from the past of Stardust Crusaders, and at the same time getting a chance to learn more about the history of the arrows and how they came to be used in more modern times by Dio and crew, and then of course Kira's old man after. Definitely deserve a win for a Frenchy backstory! I seriously cannot show him on the rocks just now, but that was hard to see from a main character I liked so much from the old days. It's nice to know he survived such a horrific set of injuries, but at least he's still with us right now. This amazing build-up is so damn iconic with just the echoing, slowly approaching footsteps of the boss. Our first proper look at the man inside! I wish I understood more of how his ability works, but it's far more complicated than Dio or Jotaro's time-related abilities. But working in this blood drops factor was smart as hell, and it's fantastic to me personally to get to see Frenchie taking on an enemy again after all this time. <laughs> King Crimson's stand in action is like a work of art. Jesus, it's looking good for him. And so soon after re entering the anime. That's just the worst. And that image of the crew all those years ago. <sighs> what the bloody heck is going on? Also, I'm just going to quickly shout out the CD. It's changed due to the addition of multiple stands over the course of the last few episodes. Oh. <laughs> 
Wow, I love stuff like this that David Productions does in JoJo. So there's various changes in the OP. As a whole, it's beyond stunning how stylish and smooth it's animated. Like, it's seriously beautiful. But then we get to this moment. <laughs> And I'm just instantly reminded of Dio stopping time and Kira reversing time. Yeah, now that OP change is just amazing. I think actually I'll go out on the limb here and say JoJo's OPs as a whole are my favourite of any anime. Also the end is great as they're clearly focusing more on the arrow now and that's changed as well as a bunch of other things. Fantastic. <gasps> Colour me extremely confused but intrigued all the same, boys and few gal squad. Okay, that was straight up one of the coolest things I've ever seen. What? <laughs> You gotta love how well they are voicing what is clearly meant to be the other characters. <laughs> oh yeah, this all day long. <laughs> this... This method of showing us that it's Giorno inside him and that he's thinking something. <laughs> that. <laughs> so I wish I knew what was happening, but I just feel in my soul that something incredibly awesome. <laughs> My word, it's even more crazy than I first ever dreamed possible. This is absolutely beyond insane. Oh dear lord, he's still alive. At least in some way, but he said he's in pain, so who knows for how long? Lovely little helpful chart. This amazing revelation making me so excited for the future of stands given all I've seen during this video about how they're already way more expansive in abilities than during Stardust. The law between that military style battle music and the boss seemingly reappearing and Frenchy yelling instructions and then Butterdurchi stand coming out of the boss, it's all too much for me to handle! Whew. At first I was gonna sin on anime sins that no one is watching the body. I'm really glad they added this to avoid it. Just when I thought the anime had shown me everything, they come up with this brilliant scene, further confusing me, as it now appears that Frenchie's stand is controlling other people's stands. <laughs> this moment, and the stuff the little guy is saying. <laughs> I'm adding this moment, but I'm not entirely sure it's as cut and dry as it seems right now. Of course they have to hit me with this sad scene right now after making me laugh and then feel tense, and now this. What a wild mixture of emotions. <laughs> And then this reveal that I can't fully show, I don't know what it means, but I have a gut feeling that it's something that can't be undone. I just hope I'm wrong. I don't... I don't even know what to say to this. 
after his joyful proclamation of returning to his home and eating his favourite food, this goes and happens to him. And ultimately we lose another one. How they did this scene, and respectfully putting no music afterwards. I adore views like this, just adds to the overall style of the anime. Also, take another win here for Frenchy figuring out the situation with the boss's two personalities. That moment is so poignant and beautiful that for me it rivals the passing of Black Might and Iggy in front of Frenchie and Stardust. <laughs> Can't show it, but Mister in Trisha's body taking out a repiste is the best. A seriously fantastic end to episode 35. Intense, well animated, great voice acting all around, and still lovely, albeit fleeting, to see Paul Naif helping the crew out and working alongside them. This quick thinking and twist that Mistrish used the fake cop's gun to save our French turtle friend. The new foe is quickly becoming one of the most deadly to the crew, and I honestly didn't anticipate this. <laughs> honestly speaking, boys and few gals, this is the best season of all to me, regardless of how it ends. I'm a huge fan of twists and turns, making me feel shocked consistently, and Golden Wind has had more than I can ever handle. This is yet another epic twist that makes no sense until they explain it. But yeah, when you add in all of the factors, for me it's the greatest. Oh, I don't think I can get away with showing the mutants these people are turning into, but I'm sure you can remember it very well. It's some creepy shizzle. When I think back to anime like Darling in the Franks and the latest season of High School DxD, I'm always so impressed by David Productions taking animation so seriously at moments like these as opposed to the former doing things like having characters walking and running on the spot all the time. I call Jojo as an anime clever all the time, but in fairness that's because it constantly surprises me how the mangaka thinks and adds twists consistently. For example, it never once occurred to me that the boss was hiding inside one of them due to the fact that he's a split personality and how that just works. Okay, this deserves a shout out because Mr. is making a lot of sense. We're all trusting Giorno at his word watching this, but as things stand, there's no confirmation at all that the boss isn't inside him. That's super well thought out as a story tool. Ah, uh, that's amazing! After all of that, it was indeed inside Miss Trisha all along! They bloody well did it again! Absolutely stunning levels of animation quality right here as he continues running whilst time leaping to avoid Miss Trisha's bullets. It's unbelievable to me that ever since I mentioned outright the sheer volume of fantastic twists in the story, that it's almost as though the mangaka upped the ante. Another twist! Another one. This fantastic looking scene. I adore how his hair moves as he flies past as well to really give that look of speed. Another one. The entire scene of returning everyone's souls to their rightful bodies. Although I have this terrible feeling that I now know full well what is going to happen to Crew Mama and I'm now just waiting to confirm that. <laughs> Oh, 
I knew it. I just knew it. He's seriously a character I will miss so much. He gave everything in the end to protect his crew, and most importantly, his friends. He worked alongside Giorno to achieve a large goal, but ended up succeeding in taking part in something so much bigger. He'll be really missed by me. Oh, damn it. They managed to get me in making this finale so much more of an emotional farewell. Now, that's a true JoJo farewell to a character. So many sudden twists, it's hard to keep up with when writing a wind script. Safe to say I'm beyond confused and excited about what this could possibly mean. Oh, oh yes, version 2.0, but more than that, who knows what this means in terms of his overall power? This isn't exactly like baby Aaron Chan the third's evolution of his stand, this is something much more meaningful. <laughs> A much, much more powerful standard than a llama has appeared! Having Mister choose to attack in this instance instead of just laying on the ground is a nice added element. This entire scene was stunning. This is so good it's making my head hurt. This is one of the best things ever. Ah! <laughs> the most powerful machine gun style ever! <laughs> Making the boss attempt to hit back after that powerful attack, giving credit to his strength as the main enemy of the season. This epic change in the OP to signify the change in Giorno and then the coming of Requiem at the end of it, in absolutely predictable, insanely high quality animation throughout. <laughs> And again, I'll state in a different way. I'm glad he's still alive at this point. As a strong main villain, you can't wipe them out in one single attack. So by doing this, they are lending credence to his overall strength and validity as the villain. <laughs> okay, well, that was one of the most horrifying images I've ever seen. <laughs> Oh my god, I just fully understood what's going to happen and allow me to frame it beforehand. The entire story has ultimately been about ridding Italy, the crew's home of the boss and his drugs, destroying their beloved country and affecting most of their lives in some way. Now here at the end, this incredibly powerful man is seemingly about to be potentially brought down by someone off his nut on his own drugs. Just like Kira being ironically killed by an ambulance on its way to help him after all that talk of fate. We may now be about to see something equally poetic in his demise, and it's one of the most clever things I've seen, in how the mangaka gives a fitting and poetic end to his villains like this. <laughs> So I don't know why this is happening, of course, but I'm very much enjoying the fact that such an evil guy like this is finding such an unpleasant end to his life. What a shame! Okay, I had to wait until the full explanation to comment on it, but what an absolutely terrifying ability if that's what the boss will be going through forever, just constantly having his life ended and feeling scared and pain. Can't say he doesn't deserve it, I suppose, but damn, that's cold, I guess you could say. Our final look at these three souls, lovingly placed above in the clouds joining our heroes who lost their lives along the way. Even though I'm sure it's a flashback or something, it's still really nice to see all of these guys together again one more time. What 
what the hell is going on in this episode? You need the son of Stundalama Baba Sama! What the hell am I writing? <laughs> Plot twist! Mister being Mister with extreme prejudice! Is that true then? Is that how we ended up actually dying because of this incident way back when? I'm very interested to know your thoughts on that because I feel I'm not quite right. I'm glad to see this change in his dealing with the guy. It nicely showcases his feelings towards his leader in wanting to save him. This was super intense, and I'm still just so massively curious as to what this has to do with the main story and how it's linked. It's episode 39, and we've never seen a season end like this. <laughs> Gonna drop one last win for Mr. Stand. It did indeed end up being my favorite of Golden Wind, and I've loved every scene with them, especially where they help out a team member. Yet another moment showing off his love for his leader. Wow, man. Happy to give his life to save his in return. I see now, I believe. So it's like the incident with the rock was kind of like fate. It started the whole journey, but for the right reasons, it ended up becoming something positive in the end. I'd love to know your opinions in the comments, though, since this can now be fully discussed, of course. Trisha, <laughs> I seriously don't understand, but the fact that Frenchie is still alive is amazing. Like, beyond amazing. I'm gonna need some solid time to process this entire season soon. It's all very emotional for me right now. Right, okay, she was inside the key, thank god. They really had me with the bloody stone the crafty gets. Obviously, it's incredibly Jojo, but honestly, this is the happiest I've been in a long time watching this, knowing he's still going to be around for a while. It means a great deal to me. I suppose the purpose here is leaving these two with some hope for a little while longer to enjoy their hard fought victory in peace. <laughs> <laughs> that. Oh, I like that a lot. Take a win. Yeah, why not? Let's go ahead and drop a final win for all of the stands of this season in the final ED. They were absolutely incredibly well designed, individual, unique and bloody brilliant. And I gotta shout out the rock we see in the first second of the first OP, nicely tying together the start with the very end. Loving that this is the very start of the newer OP. Damn, my boy is looking solid in those new clothes. Now the leader of the gang himself. 
Well, there we have it. Thanks so much to each and every damn one of you who joined me for this long journey. Like seriously, it was long. This video alone took around 22 hours to make fully, so I like to think I earned my Patreon support. As always, it was a massive undertaking to write, record and edit all of these many, many videos, but I did it for each and every one of you who told me how much you enjoy the videos as I was making them. Jojo will always hold a very special place in my heart now, and I can't believe I initially didn't like it. Golden Wind was a fantastic part 5 and my favourite so far. I cannot wait to see part 6 as soon as it's made and of course I'll happily cover it for all of you upon its completion as well. For the last time, feel free to join up to my Twitter, Discord, etc. using the links below. You can also help support my work by pledging anything you'd like on my Patreon. Again, the link is down below if that interests you. I like to think I work hard enough to warrant any support. And of course, I also offer loads of rewards, including exclusive videos. Thanks again for watching, liking and commenting and spreading these videos to those who might also enjoy them. I did this for you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video or at least in Jojo again in the future. There's a mountain, and it's mighty high. Nathan Burr, Bird Without a Word, Arias Alibari, Aiden White, PK Fan, Ali50, Ryan Anderson, Isael Caldera, Arman Jasuja, Chris Harris, Yo Nashal, Manolo Saucedo Munoz, Luis Fernandez, Joe W, Yuki Ali, Manuel Morales, Dark Lord Bloody Soul, Sentimento, Jeffa6263, Silver, Master Tank, Hoodie, Envy McVeigh, Aurora, Kevin Nauta, Stefio, Brendan Creer, Storm970, Spirit Spinner, Mr. Waffle64, Theodore Quackens, Kaj Vorzelman, Jordan Samuels, Gabby C, Amya Hamya, Crimson Shadows, Forian, Kyle Farmer, Buzzbomb3000, Jeffa6263.